Whether or not is recorded before a live guinea pig studio audience, meteorologist Joe Bastardi here. I've been inspired by a friend of mine who uh, we were a little, no, I'm, I'm going to say a tweet spat, but we were talking back and forth on Twitter. And uh, what I'm inspired uh, to show you is the interesting way that we are getting um, reports of fourth warmest year ever, second warmest year ever. I want to show you this, okay? There's a guinea pig. The guinea pigs are listening because they know if they behave and listen, they'll get carrots after I'm done. Okay, well, this is 2018. And what we have to understand is this is against the 20th century record. And before the satellite era, especially back at the front part of the 20th century, we, we had no way of measuring things, right? And it's, it's called, see, that's percentile ranking. So what happens here, folks, is look, if it's 0.02 higher than normal in here, that's a big deviation in the tropics because it takes more to vary the temperature, the warmer and more moist the air is. It is very, very important in understanding how all this works. Now, what did the actual temperatures look like in 2018? Now, if you've been following me, you know I'm sort of combating people. Ah, it's cooling all this. All this low solar is going to mean a lot of cooling. Eventually, I think it does. But here's what the temperatures actually look like. And you can see there's large areas of normal. I mean, it's definitely warmer, warmer than normal. But I want you to look at this area here that's warmer than normal. And look here. And look at the water vapor, right? Now, this is very interesting. See the water vapor, the water vapor in the Arctic, right? There's the water vapor there. Notice how the deviations from normal are much greater on the warm side in the Arctic. And of course, that is contributing to the measure of global temperature, Antarctic also. So you, know, you notice what's going on that a lot of the warming. I mean, there's definitely, it's definitely a warm, I'm not saying it's not warmer than normal in this area, but the, the biggest warming is occurring where people and life does not occur during its winter season. Now, why would that be, okay? Well, let's take a look at saturation mixing ratios. If you inject just a small amount of moisture into the air, look at the difference between minus 40 and minus 30, 0 0.12, 0 0.21. So suppose you have less than a gram of water vapor being redistributed across the entire planet, where is it going to make the biggest difference? Well, not where it's getting warm down here. It takes more and more. It's where it is very, very cold. And what does that mean? That means it snows more, there's more precipitation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's part of natural climate cycle theory. But the, the, so where does, where does all this come from? Well, if we look at, uh, I use 2006 to 2017, we had a big super nino in 1516, right? But if we look at the increase in water vapor, you notice that it is actually drying out over the tropical Pacific. So there's more incoming solar radiation there, right? True? Okay. All right. We notice this is a very, very big increase in water vapor here. And in the Atlantic Basin, okay, after all, it was a, while we didn't get hit by a lot of hurricanes, uh, we had active hurricane seasons in there. Okay, so that's low level, uh, low level uh, moisture. But I want you to look at the Arctic, all right? Look at the Arctic. Now, watch what the temperature does, okay, over that period. Now, this is against the 1981 to 2010 averages. Why do I like that? Because it's a satellite error. We, we, we can see things a lot better. My professor at Penn State, Dr. John Kerr, uh, was a forecaster. In the, uh, in the Air Force, let me get that off there, in the Air Force back in the 1950s, they were forecasting, and he was forecasting for the Pacific Ocean, all right, from South America down to um, Antarctica, back to Australia. He said he had one observation. And then the way they were taking measurements of the seawater temperatures, you're supposed to put it down there three feet or whatever. He said some guys would put it down five feet. Some guys would put it down one foot. The point is that now we actually have ways of measuring things. So what I'm pointing out to you here, it's not a coincidence that the increase in water vapor that you're seeing is making more of a difference in the Arctic temperatures. All right. See that? See how warm it is? Now, look where most people live. It actually got colder in Central Asia there. All right. It's still, it's still warmed up, but a lot of it is skewed 
to the reaction of the Arctic to increase water vapor. So, but this is what's fascinating too. When we go up to 400 millibars, it's actually been drying out. And, and you, you, if you look, if you think about it, this area at 400 millibars in the Pacific where the El Nino is, right, has, has been dry at 400 millibars, dry right down through the surface, drier than normal. What does that mean? means increased sunshine. What does increased sunshine mean over a long period of time? I mean, the sun's always out there. Well, it's not out at night, but you know what I'm talking about, right? So what does that mean? Well, it's, it's going to try to warm the ocean, okay? Now, this is from Dr. Willie Soon, okay? And he, what he did was he plotted total solar, uh, total solar irradiance versus water vapor over the oceans. I, you can't, you can't get a better correlation than that. At least, I don't know, maybe you can. But, and, and what did the temperatures do during this time? From 1900 to 1940, they climbed. We went into weaker periods here. Down they came in that colder period. And up they've been coming ever since. And there is some lag that goes on here too. But that's a, that's a better correlation than looking at something like this, which by the way says that Will Happer is correct that we are in a CO2 drought relative to the average. The average CO2 is higher than this, okay? But uh, uh, certainly, that's a better correlation to temperature than the geological history of the planet, all right? Now, I, I mean, even... Um, <laughs> I got to kick out. Dr. Soon is a really funny person, so I'm borrowing some of this from him. Uh, he plotted the price of postal stamps versus the temperatures and find out found out that that has a better correlation than CO2, which is up here in the white, okay? So that's, that's, that's interesting. So we got to get the postal. You've seen this before, but it's just a funny thing. Now, where does this water vapor come from? And of course, this is the University of Alabama Huntsville temperatures. And I was in, I'm in arguments with people over, ah, look at how much it's cooled, right? Yeah, it's like you're behind 77 to nothing and you score a touchdown and it's 77 to seven, all right? So the point is that we are warmer than we've ever been in a post-Nino era. That being said, the super Ninos launch all sorts of water into the air, right? And it makes a bigger difference. So what you, what you have here is sort of a plateau step up, right? You see that? And th this is part of my theory that it takes a long time for a super El Nino's water vapor to wash out of the atmosphere, all right. It may over the tropics. It may not mean that big a deal. But suppose there's an extra gram of water vapor, right, still up in the Arctic, and and we're we're seeing that that's ex that's exactly what's happening. It's a little bit more moist, so it's warmer. And more clouds around. It doesn't get as cold a lot of times. So uh, there seems to be a link there. So I have this thing. Yes, it is coming up. But do you think that the amount of CO two in the atmosphere is is causing these super ninos when we just showed you a very interesting correlation. Uh, let me see if I could get back there. Oh, get back. Remember that? Get back. All right. Very interesting correlation between the drying that's been going on, right over top of the uh, over top of these areas in here, and the El Ninos. I mean, if you get enough drying and you get enough sunshine, it may be linked. And then we looked at what Doctor Soon. Not Dr. Seuss. Dr. Soon showed us. There's a drying at 400 millibars. Okay, you can see that. But then we look at what Dr. Uh, Soon's research shows, and you can see the linkage, right? Now, that doesn't say that there's not there's zero effect from CO2. I, I really don't know. But what, 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 is, what is sort of frustrating is, and you know, this whole thing goes back and forth, right? Sort of frustrating is that Things that I'm showing you, why aren't other people at least looking at that? They're perfectly natural explanations for what's going on, or at least a part of what's going on. So why don't you see any of that? All right. So anyway, if you if you tuned in, you just saw. It. I have I have to keep this under ten minutes. My son told me I ramble around too much. <laughs> it's like a Bob Dylan stream of consciousness. The every Bob Dylan song is like, where did that lyric come from? All right, that's it for now. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got.